What was it like living there? You know, whenever I've watched movies, it seems it's like free love. It seems it's all very wacky, very controlling, very absurd. What was it like? Well, thank you for having me. Uh, um, I love coming on your show. Um, well, first of all, it's usually a mixed bag. So people in those documentaries, you see the end result, right, of coercive control. You see the, the suicide groups or, or things like that. But for me, there were some good bits. Like if you think of communal living, I ha I'm one of five siblings. We grew up with lots of music, lots of people, lots of travel. But of course, it was over time. If you're, if you're born into it, that's all you know, right? So that's your normal. And it was over time that I began to notice the more control elements, how religion was used as a form of control. There was free love back in the day. I mean, it started in the 70s. Control you to do what, though? Control you to do what? So I think it doesn't feel like control when you're in it. And in my book, I talk a lot about how um, corporates are similar in a way, right? You don't really realize what's toxic behavior. But we were scheduled. Like, every moment was scheduled. You would wake up early. You were often in um, groups with uh, kids your, your age, so not with your kind of family unit. And um, I guess, you know, we we, we, our mission was to tell others about God and to tell others about the way to live. But we didn't go to school as kids. You know, it was all about working within the community. And I guess the mission that drew my parents and others of their generation to it was they didn't want to sit in church buildings. They wanted to go out and do good. Sounds great, right? But it was over time that that kind of sexualized environment, um, not going to school, not having any other choices. And of course, we thought the world was going to end. Did you, did you think, did you have a happy childhood? I feel like parts of it were, but it took me a good long while to be able to separate out kind of what were the bad bits and what were the good bits. Because if you're a child, again, that's your normal and it can get very confusing and affect your mental health in a big way. So because this is all you ever knew, right. I wanted to know, how did you know that you wanted to escape? What was it that made you think this isn't for me? I think it was very gradual, right? It's noticing different things that maybe weren't quite right. But you learn to rationalize that, oh, that person wasn't right, not the belief system, right? And that's what keeps you in it for so long. But for me, as I became a teenager, I started leading a, d a double life. We had a, a few more freedoms. The founder had passed on. There was other leadership. And on the one hand, I was actually trusted and became a leader myself. But on the other hand... Oh, you I'm must be quite duplicitous <laughs> and sneaky. <laughs> it's called survival, isn't okay. it? Yeah. Right? So you're like, how do I survive when you can't quite figure out what's good and what's, what's not so good? But on the other hand, um, one of my sisters had left. I would stay with her. I had certain freedoms. And I began to sink into alcohol ad addiction, hedonistic lifestyles, just real double lives. But... Uh, people can kind of relate to wearing a mask in order to survive, right? Mm -hmm. Over time, the cracks begin to show. Uh, begin to show. Just on this, this point, Esther said, how did you escape? Do, do you have to escape? I mean, is, is pressure put on you to stay? Or, I mean, are you sort of, is the doors open and you're free to leave? You're free to leave. It's not prison, right? And I, I sometimes talk about, um, you know, the Shawshank Redemption movie, where there's this whole kind of build up to his escape, right? And he digs a tunnel and there's this big scene where there's music and rain and he's now free, right? And, and that's what people think escaping looks like. It's not like that. There are no walls. It's all up here in your mind. Mind, the guilt. They'd the... done a better job of entrapment, <clears throat> haven't they? But you fell in love and you yes. ended up getting pregnant. How did you fall in love? Was this person on the, so in the he cult? Was outside, outside of the cult and that was part of the double life was we were kind of dating and partying and it was all very <laughs> duplicitous, you know. Did um, nobody and... find out or snitch on you or anything? Well, I was quite good at it, I must say. <laughs> um, and so, of course, when I felt pregnant, then it's like at some point questions are asked, right? And you've got, and it wasn't just questions being asked. It was a culmination of many years of me going, but what else would I do? Remember, I don't have an education. What does this mean if I'm not on this joint mission of what we are supposed Before to do? Before we just mention your book, of course. were you ever angry with your parents? to say, what have you brought me into? Well, I, I think I've, you go through all the stages of grief, as it were. So, so denial, anger, um, depression, you go through all of those things. And actually, it's when you leave that sometimes the worst mental health cycles show up. So that's when my addiction got worse, depression, anxiety, suicidal thinking, right? It was afterwards, because then I was like, isolated and alone and thinking, who am I? And you've written this book, I Begin have. With You. Yeah. And if anybody is mentally strong and been through many things, it is you. So what are you saying in this book? So there's a bit more of my story. So if you're curious, do check it out. But my, my mission and my business now is all about mental health in the workplace. So it's helping people think about the toxicity that often shows up in corporate, uh, the corporate world 
And learning to, I mean, the title is Begin With You because it's thinking you can either be stuck in a victim mindset, right, and just blame your past. And certainly I sat there for many years, right? Or eventually you can make certain decisions to strengthen your mind and get yourself. So start with you, move yourself out of it. And of course, once that worked, I thought I've got to tell other people about it. And that's the book. Petra, I think it sounds amazing. amazing and you've got such, well, I feel it, a sunny disposition exactly. now. Been through a lot, but you're out the other side. Thank you for coming in. Thank you.